Welcome back. It's still uh, breakfast on the Plus Television. Now, on February 17, a gang of gunmen kidnapped more than 40 students, teachers and administrators from a secondary school in Niger State. At least one student was killed. In December, bandits, in quote, kidnapped some 300 schoolboys from a school in Kankara, located in Katsina State. These kidnappings are different from Boko Haram attacks in the past decade, where the goal was to kill those who were benefiting from Western education. In these recent instances, kidnappers are after ransom and appear to try to keep their victims alive. Nigerian federal and state authorities always deny paying ransom, yet they often do. On this segment of the show, we're focusing on kidnapping for ransom vis-a-vis -vis, uh, what's happening in Niger State. And uh, we can also look at uh, previous um, uh, kidnappings that have happened um, in recent times uh, in Nigeria. And we are joined yet again by a legal practitioner, uh, Libros Oshomo. Thanks for staying with us. Yes, good morning yeah. again. Good morning, yeah. my pleasure. Uh, Libros, it is really, really interesting when uh, we hear uh, stories of um, kidnapping and uh, yet the federal government most of the times often uh, deny you know, that anything or any ransom uh, you know, was paid to rescue uh, these Nigerians. Specifically in this particular case of um, uh, these uh, students and um, other staff in that second school, there is a demand of um, 500 million. The Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, came out last week to say that uh, the federal government is not going to pay any amount or any ransom for the release of um, these Nigerians. Looking at the <coughs> participants of government, you know, should we actually accept and believe what they are telling us? I don't think um, right from... Uh, kidnapping is not new. First and foremost, we need to admit that fact that... Um, there's always been kidnapping in Nigeria, even uh, pre-independence, but it's not, never been this prevalent. And uh, it is prevalent because um, a crime is prevalent when, two, for two reasons. One, either the, the consequences for that crime is um, you know, lower than the crime, and, and so is attractive, or that... Um, there is um, the, the government compensates mm. that act. Mm -hmm. And so when there's compensation, it becomes enticing and the government is flat-footed. And so um, kidnapping has become so lucrative and um, enticing because it is compensatory. Okay. And like I always say, in a state of lawlessness, mm -hmm. it becomes illegal to be law-abiding. When it started in the Niger Delta, it became prevalent in the Niger Delta, kidnapping for ransom, kidnapping oil workers mm -hmm. for ransom. You know, um, we treated it with kid glove because at that time they were foreigners. And so it was also easy for government to tell you that no ransom was paid, but the people were freed. No ransom was paid, nobody was arrested. Yet, you know, people just kidnapped somebody and then handed him over to you subsequently without any benefit and then the next day you hear that other persons have been kidnapped and yet no ransom was paid the people were released they are really were released into the hands of government and government this same government would say they negotiate because if um, they wouldn't want to hurt the the victims because if in the process of trying to rescue them and there's exchange of gunfire yeah that they might, you know, hurt the victim in the process. And so that's why they first negotiate. But we have never seen a situation where negotiations takes place and at the end of the day, victims are arrested. Except in some cases, we saw that of advance, you know, after, you know, so many years, not until recently, and now he's been sentenced and uh, pending appeal, though. So this is lucrative because ransom had been consistently paid even though we deny that no ransom was paid. Okay. That's so why, quickly, telling us the truth. That's, government, is, the government has never been truthful. That's why, quickly, the same government that will not pay ransom, do not pay ransom, governors will come out and say, well, we had to pay bandits to stop kidnapping because their cattle were rustled. That same government will come and tell you, will grant you amnesty, lay down your arms. That same government that will fire shot at innocent protesters, mm. but we go to hold meetings 
with bandits who are carrying, you know, submachine guns. Oh. You, you know, so when you put all the puzzle together, you know that government is definitely not telling you okay. the truth. In this situation, we found that negotiation and even payment of ransom is, is one of the military tactics or one of mm -hmm. security tactics, right? But why is it that the government continues to deny? Is it entirely wrong? Let's start with that, fundamentally. Is ransom. it entirely wrong for the government to pay ransom to secure the release of people? Or even negotiate? It is not wrong. So why do they continue wait, wait, to let's, deny that? Let's, look, what's, what's wrong is, if it's a bit, the ransom is supposed to be a bait mm -hmm. to lure these kidnappers and out capture them and capture. If you know what usually happens in 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 other societies, the fact that it's okay, continue to negotiate with them, negotiate with them, and then why we'll find a way to entrap them. And so, at the point of exchanging ransom, you know, the government comes in and they. Uh, 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 kidnappers are arrested and that's where you know they make calls and they negotiate so i have never heard okay. i've never heard apart from in nigeria in the western world where a kidnapper will kidnap a victim mm. and negotiate ransom and government is involved mm. in that negotiation and government will pay this ransom and they will go free. No arrest, to be made. So, no arrest is made quickly. Mm. So what happens here is why government will tell you that we are using these tactics. Like I said, it is supposed to be a tactics. We're using these tactics to, so that we get the victims out first. But at the end of the day, government officials also are benefiting from this ransom. That's why it is prevalent. In some cases, even police officials are culpable. Mm. They negotiate. They take the ransom there. You hear that, um, my aid, it's in the news also, where some parents said there are persons who were arrested. No. Um, um, what do you call it? Uh, the high chief from Edo State who came from America, who was killed. His brother said he took ransom to the kidnappers close to a police station. A friend of mine was kidnapped, and when he was released, the first question the police asked him was, how much did you pay as mm. ransom? And you know, he said, how come this is the first question you're asking me? So you're going to probably know them, so you go meet them and, you and know. And demand for a court. And demand for a court, or you know, you want to know the exact amount because you know these people. Let me also shock you. Mm. My friend's father was kidnapped, and they went to the police. He said the police got to the scene looked at the bullet casing and said, ah, don't worry, this is um, the Mabel's handwork. Wow. They won't wow. Um, so they just the, negotiate with so them. They it's like this talking trade oh that there God. are a lot of undertones when it comes to this ransom payment because a lot of people are benefiting, like you have rightly said. So does it really say now, if I could infer from all that you have said, that um, there is no, there's no, maybe there's just no, there's no hope, hope for, you know, uh, for I can't stemming see. this particular kidnapping in the body in Nigeria, and then you. the government does not really want to end it because some people are actually benefiting from it. The government is benefiting from it. Uh, General Sani Abacha says any crisis that exceeds 48 hours, mm. government has a hand in it. Mm. And yes, because sometimes government create crisis, crisis to checkmate, you know, uh, a situation. So in this case, let me also shock you. A, a uh, my wife's relation was kidnapped. They reach out to a police commissioner in the state, the former police commissioner in Edo State, so that it doesn't look as if I'm making up stories. And this commissioner said, "Oh, don't worry. They just go and negotiate with them. Be friendly, oh, be friendly. Mm -hmm. They would, they would release him. They don't worry, you know." So it became a racket. You remember in that Lagos or a, or a Bini Road, it was almost a daily occurrence. Daily, yeah. It was almost a daily occurrence. It was even moving closer to the Ogu end of it until um, the Afenefere chief Ten's daughter was killed. And then Fashoranti's uh, daughter and then Amoteku and all of those stories. Now, government is... People had... Even the Sultan of Sokoto admitted that out of every 10 kidnappers... Kidnapped uh, Fulani headsmen, sorry that are kidnapping you have seven out of every 10 kidnappers 
you have seven as Fulanese. And also, you, I also need to let you know that because some of these villagers also have been, you know, chased away from their farm and some, some seen kidnapping as a lucrative job. Some have even left farms. Some of the villagers mm. have collaborated with the headsmen. You know, it's a lucrative business now. So when you have a situation where government is looking the other way, and then governors are proposing amnesty Blanket for terrorists, that. for bandits. We have given amnesty to militants before, including armed robbers, because that amnesty granted to militants in the Niger Delta. Some were armed robbers, barefaced kidnappers. Mm. We have given those set amnesty. So others are now asking for their own amnesty. In Kassina, the state government granted amnesty to bandits, but did it stop the kidnapping? Rather, it escalated. Know. Okay. So what is you have happening now is that it is lucrative, it is paying, and government that is supposed to be responsible for the citizen is asking the citizen to go defend themselves. Otherwise, grant amnesty just, to kidnappers. Let me, let me call in from what you just said. And because that's why. right now, right uh, now, so uh, since, uh, okay, since uh, the average Nigerian student and, uh, and the likes are being you know, kidnapped, unlike in the days where we had the well-to-do and well and uh, well the people you know, being scared for their life. So invariably now, what does he tell me as an average Nigerian that um, I should no longer trust the government to take care of my security? I should do whatever the is government, within my power it is not to just for protect me. myself. The government has told you, the, the national uh, the, uh, chief of defense staff mm. had come out, it's not my statement, to say, defend yourselves. Mm. They have only three bullets. So the, that is the chief of defense staff has said, defend yourselves. Um, uh, Zamfara, governor has said, these people... Not all bandits are criminal. criminals. I wonder if he took time to even check the meaning of bandits. Hmm. And yet, you know, the Bauchi state governor says, allow these cattle herders to carry guns because hmm. their cattle are being rustled. So the life of a cattle is more than that, the life of a human being in Nigeria. And so you are now asking me if you should trust the government to protect you hmm. when these people no longer travel by roads. The same people who are traveling, it, when they travel by road, they have a retinue of policemen protecting them. But in some cases, even the policemen are not safe. Mm. Ozekome was kidnapped. Four policemen were killed. And at the end of the day, what happened to the families of those policemen that were killed? Has anybody bothered to find out? Some of them are not safe. So in some cases, they collaborate also. In every Fulani settlement in Nigeria, the chief of that village would have collected something to sell that land to them. They don't just come and settle. So you also have villagers who are collaborating mm. with these people. So when this happens, ransom is paid. Where does the money get to? When you had NSAS protesters, government timelessly froze accounts of protesters. Government deployed the military. You saw what happened at Lekki Togate. The combat-ready policemen that were deployed. So what it means is that it is not a lack of people to deploy that is fueling this. It is because you have sympathy for these kidnappers and it is lucrative. It is yielding profit to some person. So it is very convenient now for us to just label it Yahoo, Yahoo. Okay. So every young old man you see now makes so much money. Nobody is asking questions because government is stealing. The people also need to find a way to steal. So if you can't... If you can't take care of your own security, take a flight. If there is no flight to these places, then sit down where you are. Mr. Even Shana. in the train, you remember the train between Lagos, Abuja, and Kaduna broke down midway. In the space of two weeks, the train broke down twice. Even the military, military officers now take train between Abuja and Kaduna. Mm -hmm. So if people at that level cannot protect themselves. Mm. A situation where police officers are kidnapped and ransom is negotiated and paid. Mm. And government will tell you no ransom was paid. Yet, not one arrest was made. You believe them? So if all of this is happening, what it tells you, my brother, is to your turn to Israel. Okay, Mr. Oshama, the government have repeatedly said that an accused certain foreign elements of sponsoring Boko Haram and terrorist activities in Nigeria but let's look at how the business, the culture of ransom payment is 
a lucrative source of funding for terrorist activities in Nigeria? You see, um, government in one breath. Let me quickly take you to Zamfara. As we speak, Zamfara, there's gold mining in Zamfara. Nobody has been able to link that gold mining to the banditry in Zamfara and the kidnapping. You have a lot of Chinese people in Zamfara who are mining. How come not one Chinese has been kidnapped in that place? Not one. Government will say there are some foreigners who are failing this insecurity. Yet they have not been able to tell you who these people are. Is it that we are so helpless? And yet, you say foreigners. You say the cattle herders are foreigners. And yet you want to grant right of way, easement, mm. to foreigners in your country. You are proposing amnesty for foreigners in your country. Also, sadly, another part of it is that you are paying ransom to foreigners because when a crime, when there is so much money in a, cr in a crime and criminality, what it would do is to expand you know, those involved. Okay. So if you pay 800 million naira to a gang of kidnappers without arrest, what that had done is that you have, you are failing kidnapping. Mm. You have bandits who are now emboldened and enriched with 800 million. The tendency is that they are going to expand their network to tell others that, look, this pays. And so, the criminality that you are trying to avoid, the Boko Haram that you are trying to fight, you empower. You are empowering mm. them because they also are seeing what is happening. If they are not the ones, mm. you know, having all of these cells uh, kidnapping. Yes. And so, in a cashless society, you pay 800 million. The first question is, how did the money come? Mm. Where did you gather that cash? Mm. But in Dubai, Nigerians were jailed in Dubai for financing or aiding you know, terrorist organizations in Nigeria, including a government official. But government didn't talk about it. Mm -hmm. Government did not freeze one account of these people. We registered SIM card mm. to track kidnappers after the registration. Now they said BVN. After BVN, they now said, no, you need to do national identification mm -hmm. number. You need to now link it with your BVN and all of that linking. Yet, in all of this linking, all of this data collation, with every one that we do, government will bring another one to create distraction from the business of kidnapping. Because if you say you paid 800 million, we know in Nigeria here, there's over invoicing for contract. Yeah. But in contracts, there'll be bidding process. You will want to, you definitely execute the job. So people will see it. But in kidnapping and ransom payments, mm. what happens is if they negotiate 500, you say no, they are asking for 800. So you take 800 out of the coffers and then you give 500, you keep 300. Mm. So you don't need to go look so for contracts. Mm. You don't even need to go look. You are 300,000 or 300 million you know, richer. So how do you think government would want such, you know, crisis to end because they are making money from it without doing anything okay so we've been talking about you mentioned earlier about uh, you know elephants fighting and the grass that suffers the people in focus here are the kids in northern nigeria mm -hmm. Not Over, just northern nigeria even southern yeah, nigeria yes I'm but the, the focus here is basically the north where you know this is the base of these terrorist groups since 2013 uh the un said over 1000 kids have been abducted, including over 200 schoolgirls. I want you to give me your thoughts on how you feel this spate of kidnappings of schoolgirls, school children, would be affecting the psychology of kids in the North. You see, um, my, I, have, um, I have, you know, an uncle whose security guard is from Chibok, you know, and um, he has his friends, so many of them. And then um, I, I imagine, I can't imagine the last time they went home. They stopped going home. So you have a lot of them down south now, riding Okada, riding Kekenape. They've run away from schools. 
back home because of the fear of kidnapping. As we speak, you remember the Chibo girls bring back our girls became a campaign slogan for the APC. And after that, the Dapchi gets kidnapped. Not to talk of the boys slaughtered in Buni Yadi. And yet, this is the life of Nigerians who play politics with it. How were the guests from Dapchi returned? How were the guests from Chibok kidnapped? They drove vehicles, took them all, and left the city. These are places where Ami had taken down um, uh, um, telecommunication servers, where you have checkpoints on every road, every, um, um, uh, what do you call it, two poles mm. in these areas. Yet these people came in, took such large number of students, and then drove off to God knows where. And yet you want to tell me that government was not involved. In Dapchi, the same thing. When negotiations took place, government said no ransom was paid. But at the end of the day, after some of the guests were released, they drove them back into town. Drove them back into town, dropped them, and drove off. And government said no ransom was paid. And yet the people said, look, God, ransom was paid to them. And then they purchased arms and did whatever they needed to do with that money. Then you now had creation of splinter groups. It just expanded by the day. Because now if government can pay ransom, then it means that it is lucrative. Katsina, till date, Lea Shaibu is still in captivity. Nobody is talking about it, apart from a few persons. In, in Katsina, the president was in Daura, just 15 kilometers from him. Right. Students were kidnapped. Okay. Students were kidnapped. And yet, government said no ransom was paid. paid. Not an arrest was made. Okay, and when the, the sorry, quickly, yeah. the, when the students were released, mm. they took them, they made uniforms for all of them, took them to the presidency, they showcased them, they play photo ops photo. with them. Mm. And nobody is talking about, okay, how do we forestall a reoccurrence? That, that Travelers are kidnapped daily on Abuja Kaduna Highway. As a way forward, what do we do? Let's just wrap up this. Same as, a as a way, way forward, forward, what do we need to do? A way, as a way forward, first and foremost, you need to increase the consequences of kidnapping. The kidnapping, the consequences should be higher than the, uh, 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 what do you call it, the kidnapping itself. Did you suggest this, death penalty like most people have said? It is not. If you, what, you have death penalties on your law books. Mm. Is it not when you, you, are, you have the determination mm. to enforce the laws? We should secondly have the determination to mm. ensure that we put an end to it. Lastly, we should avoid this windmill of justice grinding slowly but surely. Issues like of, of kidnapping should be dealt with summarily taken to court, five days, judgment is passed. Thank you very so much, Mr. you do Mr. these things, people will know that there are consequences for action. Indeed. Otherwise, Indeed. my brother, we just a joke. Thank, Thank you, so you very much, much Mr. Libro Sushama, for your time. It's been very interesting analyzing these, you know, dicey issues in Nigeria. Uh, well, here's where we draw the curtains on this conversation. We'll take a break to return to talk about Nigeria exiting recessions and to review the possible factors that are responsible for this after this break.